What is going on YouTube? I am Jerem here. Just a couple hours ago, Riot dropped the patch 10.2 notes, which is obviously going to be the second patch for Season 10 of League of Legends. This patch is going to be going live on January 22nd, and it's something that people always get really, really excited about. Obviously, keeping the game fresh and ever-changing and interesting is something great for all players, but if you want to be climbing, if you want to be playing your best, you need to stay up to date on those patch notes because potentially they could have some really big changes that could impact one of your ranked games. Uh, and since on this channel, I'm all about keeping you guys up to date with the latest news and everything and helping you become the best player as you can be, I want to run through these patch notes for you guys so you know all the changes and you're up to date on everything, but also so I can give some of my opinions and everything. Uh, when I did this for patch 10.1, the video seemed to be well received, so we're going to be doing it again for patch 10.2, and if we do, if this video does well again, then maybe this will be something we do for the whole season. But uh, just some precursor pre-notes for this patch. Uh, one of the things that Riot is saying is that they are encouraging people to do their placements sooner rather than later. I know a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to do my placements right at the beginning of the year because that's when all the trolls are out, blah, blah, blah. Like, I've been playing. The game's not that bad right now. You can honestly get in it. You're, you're safe. We're past the first couple of, of days and weeks. Uh, also, they want you to do your placements because Clash, they're saying, is going to be coming back relatively soon, and you have to be placed to do Clash. So if you want to participate in Clash, if that's something you're interested in, make sure you get those placements done because the next coming weeks, Clash is going to be out, and you don't want to miss out on that because that's always a really, really good time. With that being said, we're getting right into the changes. The very first change is to Aphelios. Some very welcome nerds. Uh, I've been waiting for Aphelios nerfs. I'm sure a lot of other people have been as well. But for Aphelios, uh, Calib Calibrum, that's the sniper rifle, it is going to be getting a basic attack mark damage nerf and a Q cooldown increase. So that'll be a pretty significant nerf. Uh, Crescendum, the Chakram, is getting a base attack damage nerf. And Severum, the Scythe Pistol, is getting a Q damage nerf. Overall, that's three nerfs on one patch, even though they are all relatively small individually. But when you put together three nerfs on one champion in one patch, that's always going to be pretty, pretty significant. And I'm sure his win rate will see a significant decrease um, because he, he is really overtuned. He is pretty strong right now, especially in the hands of players who know what they're doing with him. Uh, so I think these are some definitely really, really welcome nerfs. The next change is going to be to Draven, where his R damage ratio now scales. Uh, I think it's kind of a weird change. You're not really playing Draven for the late game, obviously. So giving him increased alt damage later in the game seems like a really insignificant change to me. Uh, obviously, all buffs are nice if it's a champion that you like or enjoy or want to play. But I don't think that'll be doing anything too significant. Jinx, she's getting a passive bonus movement speed which now applies with epic monsters as well which just means dragons barons heralds and i think it's a really interesting change i don't think it'll be like a huge change it's obviously not going to come up all the time or in every game there's not always going to be an objective and then a team fight right after especially if you're taking it it's like really situational really conditional um but it honestly could allow jinx to carry a really big fight a really big dragon fight a really big baron fight uh, something like that after your team t after her team takes it uh, but since it is so conditional and situational i don't think she'll see a huge win rate increase but i think it'll feel really good Good, uh, when, once you're in game. So I think it's a solid change. Karma is getting a Q and W base damage increase. This is something that a lot of people, myself included, are definitely concerned about. Getting a base damage increase, that's going to make tank karma even stronger. Tank karma sucks to play against in solo queue. It's so annoying. It is like unkillable. It's so frustrating. But also seeing it in professional play is so boring and so uninteresting. A lot of people are confused why they didn't give her an AP ratio increase on these abilities. They wanted these abilities to be stronger and they wanted to promote that AP karma. Um, obviously this will be a buff to all karmas of AP Karma in this lanes and AP Karma support will be getting a significant buff as well, um, but it could push Tank Karma back into being meta in top or mid, more specifically top, uh, and that would really be annoying. So hopefully Riot has some plan to keep that in check a little bit. Uh, Lulu is getting a base armor and attack damage round up, which is pretty insignificant. They're just changing like a little bit off numbers to round it up a little bit. So it is a buff, but it, it shouldn't really matter. An E cooldown decrease. Uh, Range supports are in a really bad spot right now. They need all the buffs they can get. I don't think it makes uh, Lulu S tier, but it, maybe it'll help her out a little bit for solo queue, so that's always nice. Nautilus is getting a Q base damage decrease. I think that's great. That's a huge change. The fact that Nautilus has been dominating the support and even mid lane meta for so long. He just does so much damage. He's so tanky. He has shield, CC. He's just a do-it-all champion, and if they want to get him out of the bot lane, one way they can do that is definitely by decreasing his damage. Uh, just decreasing damage on the Q isn't going to gut him. He's still going to be playable, um, but I think that will obviously help and maybe get him more in line with some of the other supports. We can actually see some diversity in the support meta. Uh, Kiana, she's getting a W passive attack speed. Now scales, I mean, it's a nerf early, but uh, as you get later into the game, it actually becomes a buff at level 500 W. Um, this is just to, they're trying to weed out Kiana jungle. They don't want it to be as playable. It makes her way too strong of a flex pick in competitive and LCS and stuff. Uh, 
I'm sure that LCS players and maybe super high level players will still try to see if she can work and maybe make a way that Kiana jungle can still work. Um, but I would say that probably kills her in solo queue. Her clear was already really, really weak. Her win rates are already terrible. And only people at the very, very top level of solo queue and LCS and stuff were seeing success with her. So I would say we're probably done with the Kiana jungle as far as like medium and low elo solo queue players go. Um, also, it, it obviously will hurt Blaine Kiana a little bit. You'll feel that attack speed, uh, especially when getting like auto resets and stuff. Um, but it shouldn't it shouldn't be anything too bad. Uh, the next one is Sona. She's getting an E self movement speed now flat and increased. Uh, this just means that when she E's, she is going to be getting a massive, massive speed boost. That's going to feel really nice for Sona. She is, has such a low health pool. She is so squishy. Being able to run around and reposition better is going to be super, super nice. Still giving that E speed boost to the rest of her team, which will be super helpful for everyone as well. But keeping her alive potentially for longer will feel super, super good. And that's another range support that they're struggling in the bot lane. They need a bunch of buffs. So I think it makes sense that they're buffing those and nerfing Nautilus on the same patch. Trundle is getting a W movement speed increase and his E slow is increased. Uh, just some nice buffs to Trundle. We haven't really seen him in meta in top or jungle in quite some time. I'm not really even sure when the last time he was like really, really strong in LCS or in solo queue was, but it should help out with him for sure. I mean, Trundle's probably not going to be really, really meta until a ton of tanks come back and we're not really seeing a ton of tanks in the top lane or in the jungle right now. Uh, so that's part of the reason why he's been struggling. Uh, I don't think the buffs are really going to bring him back. They're trying to make Trundle jungle stronger with these. Um, but I don't really think anyone's going to be pulling out the Trundle jungle just yet. Maybe with a couple more buffs, maybe they're slowly getting there, but not yet. And finally, the last champion is going to be Ziggs getting a Q base damage increase and his W enemy knockback is increased and his E slow is increased. Uh, I think this is actually going to be a pretty su substantial uh, buff to Ziggs. I don't even think Ziggs is that bad right now, so I'm kind of surprised that they're buffing him in three ways. Uh, his Q base damage, that is crazy because he spams the Q so much early. So just an increase of even even a little bit, like 10 damage, like they increased it. Uh, that's actually 10 damage on each Q. And if he's laying so many Qs, that can actually be a really, really sizable increase in damage. The W knockback, obviously going to be very, very nice. He's immobile, so being able to stay alive by knocking people away and getting to safety, so, so nice. Because if he can survive through that early game, if he becomes harder to kill, then he's able to scale into a monster more easily. So that's going to be pretty, pretty nice for Ziggs. Uh, and his E slows increase again. That'll uh, help with surviving, running away, kiting people out a little bit. That'll be super nice. Uh, I think Ziggs kind of becomes pretty, pretty good. He's not going to be seeing LCS play or anything. But if you are someone who plays Ziggs, which I guess really isn't very many people, but those are actually pretty significant buffs to a champion that I don't even think was that bad previously. Uh, as far as items, they're going to be nerfing Agility Cloak. It's critical strike chance going from 25% to 20%, just because you see those builds where people are stacking the four Agility Cloaks. Riot doesn't want. Uh, weird builds like that kind of disrupting the game giving people 100% crit chance so early so now with that 20% you can't get to 100% it's easy and I don't think people are going to be taking five cloaks of agility because you just don't have room in your inventory so that nerf I think definitely makes sense uh, frozen hearts going to be getting an armor increase from 100 to 110 tanks are in a really bad state right now they've been struggling for quite some time they need all the buffs they can get on those tank items I wish they would kind of buff magic resist items in a way too but getting a buff on any item is great because yeah I haven't really seen anyone build frozen heart in quite some time uh, and then Storm Razor. Storm Razor has been really good. I think it's kind of been sleeper OP. I think a lot of people have been sleeping on it. And it's really strong. It does a ton of damage. And that slow just allows you to pump out so much more damage to people. Um, so it is funny that they are nerfing it because it hasn't even been seeing that much play, even though it has been really, really strong. Uh, but the attack damage is going to be going from 55 to 50. And I think that is a nerf that makes sense because it has... When people build it, it is just a menace to play against. And then finally, the last change of this patch is going to be to Rift Herald. They are reducing the health to Rift Herald at all levels. This is because you have all those top laners saying that top lane sucks. There's no reason to play around it. It's a bad roll. You can't carry games through top. So by making Rift Herald have less HP, they're making it a stronger buff, a buff that you are more likely to play around, that you are more incentivized to play around. And I think that's going to be a good change. I think Rift Herald was already, honestly, you killed it pretty fast. It's already pretty weak. Uh, but just being able to kill it even faster will allow top laners to solo it maybe and even be more impactful that way or give junglers another reason to play around that top side, which I think is a good change because dragons have been so strong so far in season 10. Um, so the games have been very bot lane centric and having those two kills you're able to pick up in the bot lane too gives you so much reason to play bot. 
uh, all the buffs to the top side of the map are always going to be very, very good. But that's pretty much it for this video today, guys. That is my patch 10.2 rundown, all the changes, all my opinions, all that great stuff. But I want to hear what you guys think too. Definitely leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about patch 10.2. Was there any great changes or any changes that they messed up on? Is there any changes that should have been in this patch but weren't? Drop a like if you enjoyed this video. Also, subscribe to update on all of my latest content, everything we got going on here, all kinds of informational videos like this one, guides, strategies, all that great stuff to help you become a better player in Season 10. So if that sounds great to you, definitely subscribe. Hopefully I catch you guys all in the next video. Until then, peace.